Good morning, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. Oh, magnify the Lord me. Let us exalt his name together. The gate Jehovah God that's worthy of all honor and glory and praise is a loud you and I as I always say another day of his extended grace and mercy that he has bestowed upon us. I pray, my brothers and sisters, you have been worshiping God in spirit and truth for the great and mighty things he's done in your life and time past, even now, and what we believe in God to do for in the future. I'm so excited as always to decree and declare the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because I know it's the power that has God has given it unto us as believers in Christ, the power to lead. He says what his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Our God here guiding us from earth to glory to heaven. Even guiding us how to live day to day lives here on earth. My brothers and sisters, I just want to thank you and you for joining again as we worship God in spirit and truth today through by the word of God. I'm too busy learning how to love than to hate. And my brothers and sisters, we decree and declare that in Jesus' name that we're going to do that because we can do all things through Christ who strengthen you and I. So today, my brothers, I just give God glory and praise. I just think I can never thank God enough um, for his presence and his Holy Spirit. I can never thank God enough for Jesus Christ himself that is in the heaven on the right hand of the Father still interceding for you and I here in the earthly realm. And that's why we should always magnify and glorify his name. And the word of God tells me we should bless the Lord all times. His praise shall continue to be in your mouth and my mouth because we have a reason to praise him. If not praising him just that other men will be drawn unto him. He said if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto him. And he's already been lifted up from the earth. <laughs> he's in heaven on the right hand of the Father. But what we can do, we can lift up the name of Jesus. <laughs> the name of Jesus which is greater and more powerful than any other name. But he says his name is above all things, whether in heaven or on earth or under earth. That every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God our Father which are in heaven. So my brothers, we're going to touch and agree. We're going to touch and agree in prayer. And then we're going to get right into the word of God today to see what the spirit of God is having for us, the church of believers on today. And not only for us that are believers, but those that are also that are li listening in at the word of God, praying that we all have an ear to hear. Our eyes, the Holy Father in heaven, we magnify and glorify your holy name, for you alone are worthy, God. There is another God like you, greater than you. For you are our heavenly Father that never sleep nor slumber. You are the all-knowing, all-seeing, everywhere at the same time, God. Um, looking down into the hearts of mankind, when man look at the outer prince, that you know the hearts of your people. So we thank you even now, God, not only looking down into our hearts, but also, God, anoint our ear gates that we have an ear to hear, anoint our eyes that we have eyes to see, anoint our minds that our minds will be transformed through by the word of God, that we will have the mind of Christ. And also, God, anoint our hearts, circumcise our heart through by the power of the Holy Spirit. You so saw although the hour of man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day. We thank you now, God, for the uh, refreshing. <laughs> you said all greatest heat is in us and heat is in the world. The Holy Spirit, although we're in the world, we should not be of the world because now we've been born again of the Holy Spirit of God and now we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. So we thank you even now, God. But as your word go forth on today, you promise that your word will go forth. It should not come back void. It will do what you send to accomplish in the lives of your people. So we give you glory and praise, God, for the word of God, the people of God, and the anointing of God. And most of all, your Holy Spirit of God that speaks, leads, in God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm so excited about the word of God on today. I am too busy learning how to love than to hate. Maybe in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, that the word of God says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself up, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bear all things, believe in all things, and hope all things, endureth all things. 
Turn and never fail it. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then which is then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I also am known. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. My brothers and sisters, I am too busy <laughs> learning how to love than to hate. We see Apostle Paul is talking to the church of Corinth. The church of Corinth, um, um, even when he dealt with in First Corinthians the twelfth chapter, verse one, when he was telling the church of Corinth, he brother that he had them not to be ignorant. Not that they would be dumb or stupid or anything, but he did not want them to be ignorant concerning the spiritual gifts that has been given to the church. Those spiritual gifts that have been given to individuals and have been given to the church um, for the perfecting of the saints to they come into the unity of the faith. Not only that, there was um, individuals even as today, how what they was doing was that although they was pursuing knowledge and pursuing wisdom, that even how they got proud. You know how it says, knowledge puffeth up. <laughs> knowledge will puff us up and we don't allow the Holy Spirit bring balance. But we see that it was bringing division. He was telling them the importance of them realizing that they were men and members of one body and that all these um, gifts, when you read in First Corinthians 12, how he was saying there was diversity of gifts, all these gifts are given by the self same spirit. The same spirit, the one son, Jesus Christ, and also these gifts given for the body of Christ. But we see here that even some individuals, even when it was dealing with we should think about that sometimes we have a weaker brother or weaker sister that's in the faith that may be calm of mind, they may be new babes in Christ, or they may be spiritually grown, but it may be some things that um, that to them, it weakens them. They consider to be sin to them what we may not consider to be sin to us. And especially when it comes to different types of meat, like it says that if you're drinking or eating things that offend a brother because they're weaker in the faith, um, don't do it to cause them to sin. So whatever it may not just be that, whatever it is, um, the cause them to sin. And that shows that what we're being a stumbling block. It means that just because I may eat certain meats, it's not sin to me. And another brother or sister may be sin to them. It doesn't mean I should judge and belittle them because they won't eat the meat that I eat because it's, it's not sin unto them. And it's not sin to eat meat, certain meats. But um, when you read into the Word of God, whether in Leviticus or... There's certain animals and meats that individual, even especially a lot of the Jewish customs and even some individuals today, is certain foods they don't eat. But um, we're going to be focused on today, love. <laughs> like I said, love lifted me, but nothing else would have helped love lifted me. And we're talking about the love of Jesus Christ. So we see here, in the midst of that, we need to focus mainly on the love of God. That's what we're going to face. We're not talking about Eros love, love of a husband and wife, or man and woman, or filet, or friends, or uh, other associates. We are talking about the love of God and the love of God that's in us now. That we are new creatures. The word of God said, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away; all things are coming new." But first of all, we're going to start dealing with how Apostle Paul is dealing with the Church of Corinth and how he's. We know that even how that um, when he was telling them about speaking in tongues. When you see in 1 Corinthians 12, it speaks of the spiritual gifts. Not only 1 Corinthians 12, but in Romans 8 or 12, and Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And we can see how that um, not only 1 Corinthians 12, how I speak of spiritual gifts, but also in 1 Corinthians 14, when it starts dealing with about speaking in tongues. And this is what we're seeing here when we are dealing with um, the love, the love that we should show forth as being born again, believing in Christ. So we see here, we're going to see how. That Apostle Paul is dealing with how if I have not church, I am nothing. And that's what the first few verses are dealing with here. That if we do not have charity, charity means love, which it says the greatest gift of all is love. So we see here, um, and before I read that, I do want to read 1 Corinthians 12, 31. 1 Corinthians 12, 31, because that's before we begin 1 Corinthians 13. How that even how Apostle Paul was dealing with other spiritual gifts. How in verse 31 it tells us, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, 
He says, but cover earnestly the best gifts and yet show out to you a more excellent way. So he said the best gifts. We know all very good and perfect gifts come from God. But we know also how that even there are foundational gifts. And the foundational gift is going to be love is the foundation of uh, everything. Because we see here that was the greatest commandment. When God told us the greatest commandment, when he tells us to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, soul, love thy neighbor as thyself. And how he also mentioned in um, Matthew, that's in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. But also how God tells us that the greatest commandment is the first John 13, 34 to 35. He said, new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciple because of the love that we show. And we see here, that's how individuals know that we are truly born again. And this is what Apostle Paul is telling the church of Corinth, how people can know that they are truly followers of Christ. Because we can see here how when he's saying <laughs> if if we have charity and if we don't have charity that show forth we're not truly born again and which is love. And if we do have charity, we do have the love of God in us, we should well, our character should have changed. And this is what we're seeing here when he's dealing with and the first three verses when he said, Though I speak with tongues and men of angels have not I charity and have not charity he said I become you know like a lot of noise what he said a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal not only that even though we have prophecies love is God love is above the gifts <laughs> we need to operate these gifts with love and this is what Apostle Paul is telling them although you have the gift of prophecy although you have the gift of knowledge although you have the gift of faith and he said although you have the faith to move great mountains he told them but if you don't have love you still have nothing so he's saying having these spiritual gifts um, in, in your life and you're operating, the word of God tells us our gifts and call them not repentance, but if we, are oper if we are operating, including myself, if we are operating the gifts and we are doing the outside love, we don't, uh, we don't have nothing. We just operating the gifts outside of love and not getting any credit or reward from God because we're operating the gifts outside of the commandment of God. God is not going to honor and bless and reward nothing or anything or anybody outside of his word. So we see here, you know a lot of times that what a prophet man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. And this is what we're talking about. Here, even when he took and said, although lost time, and it is, I'm a good person. And that's what he was saying in verse 3 about the, although we store our goods to feed the poor and though we give our body to even sac what sacrifice our own body. You know how with the Hebrew boys and they was in the line there <laughs> in the fire furnace. You know how they got out here and delivered them. But even their body being burned, if they didn't, have, if their death wasn't for the glory of God, it still would have been in vain. Just to be burnt, to be sacrificed, and burnt without um, being uh, because we're suffering for Christ. He said that God will show some persecution. So we see here. He said that profit you not to be doing it out of love. And we don't have to do that because we know when the word of God said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that who so believe should not perish. For he sent his son to the world not to condemn the world, but the world through him may be saved. And we know that Jesus Christ himself, he was the greatest sacrifice. He was the greatest sacrifice for you and I. And so that's how we can see how if I have not charged that I am nothing. You know how I, a lot of times we'll sing these songs and don't know the meanings to them. We need to add scripture. So I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. We're somebody. If we're in Christ Jesus and born again of the Spirit of God, we are somebody. So we need to stop saying these songs. We need to realize that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Because we see here that not only that, um, we see how in verse 24, when it starts talking about if I am of charity, if I am of love, this is the character that we should have. If we are truly born again of the Holy Spirit of God, and we are followers of Christ. He said, love you one another, for I love you. And that we, since God is love, and now that we are born again, and he is our father, Jesus Christ, our big brother, in heaven, right hand, father, we've been adopted in the family of God. Now we are led by the spirit of God, not by the flesh, uh, me and the Holy Spirit. Now we can see that how that we should be just like our father. Our DNA, our bloodline has changed. From my biological, that's what I'm saying. We are um, natural beings. The word of God said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, the old is a new creature. Old things are passed away, all things become new. But we are trying to see now how can we love how God said love? 
we'll talk about this godly love, this love of God that we can only do and by being born again of the Spirit of God and able in our submission to the Holy Spirit of God. So we see here, my brothers and sisters, that also um, his commandment, the, the greatest commandment that he gave, loving him, loving our neighbors, ourselves, that is, I mean, that's God's command. So it's not us trying to make us love, love in spite of, because we want now that we're love, we should love it and everybody, even love our enemies, that we consider to be enemies. Um, love cast, perfect love cast out fear. Love cover multitude of sin, and we know that's what God's love. So we see also, my brothers and sisters, getting back to um, now that our character should change, we see in verses 4 through 7 when it says, Charity, I tell you, I said, I'm too busy. I should, I'm too busy. You should be too busy. Learn how to love than to hate. Because I tell you, just in first with the 13th chapter, these 13 verses, we can live this chapter out from here into eternity. <laughs> I don't know about you, uh, but by the help of the Holy Spirit still work within you and I. Because we have to realize since we are many members of one body, we are the church. As a body of Christ, we got to love you one another. And that's what Apostle Paul is trying to get the church to realize. There's unity and power. And especially since he's dealing with these spiritual gifts. And um, we cannot use, we can, because we're the God says our gifts and call our repentance. But to be effective and to be the heart and souls for the kingdom of God. And in direct individuals to Christ who he is his love. We got to show forth the love of Christ. And this here in verses 4 through 7 is telling us what real, this is what real love should look like. And us as being born again believers, because we can see when we was in the world and not in other world, but now we're in the world and not other world. We've been born again of the Spirit of God. Our love language should be different than the world love language that we was in the flesh. So we see in verse 4 how he said, Charity, suffer long, is kind, and if not, vaunting not itself, not puffed up, don't get puffed up, don't get easily angered. And also it says, um, also don't behave yourself unseemly. We act in, in unseemly. Well, we're not walking in the love of Christ. Also it said, seek him not in her own, not selfish, not easily provoked. You know, sometimes we get easily provoked and easily offended. Where the God said, offenses come. And you know how it is also, it tells us to think no evil. You know the word of God says we need to cast out the master's mind. We start thinking things that's evil, that's not of honest, of the, things are not pure, things are not just, things are not good reports. We know already that what? We are not walking in the love of Christ. We're not even thinking in a loving way. So we see here, it said, bear of all things, believe of all things, hope of all things, and do of all things. I tell you, we got work. We got work. That need to be done in our lives when it comes to love. But we don't need to try to work it ourselves because we can't do it. We need to be allowing the power of the Holy Spirit that we've been able to embody with and empower us to what? Live a life that's pleasing to God. And that's why we can see how that we have the power. Because Acts 2.37 tells us, um, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, that you should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And that's why I say, even verse 4 to say, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And that's what we got to do. We got to save ourselves from this untoward generation. If if we want to make it into eternity, but not only make it into eternity, then we may live a life um, that's pleasing to God here in this earth. And even how the word of God tells us, train up a child the way they should go, they get all the shit out of the park. And also it tells about children, my only mother and father, your day should be left upon the earth. But also tell the parents, don't provoke the children to anger wrath. So what I'm saying is, if we're provoking, and as believers, and being envious and jealous and not loving, not forgiving, not kind, not showing mercy. We are not walking in real love. And not only that, if individuals in our lives, I can share that as two sides, you know, not only just us, if individual in our lives that's not showing forth what true love is according to 1 Corinthians 13, they really don't love us. Or if they really say they love us, 
And they are still like we ourselves. So I have to share that too. Like we ourselves, if we are not showing forth the character of the love according to First Timothy 13, this not as exhaustive as this, but the Holy Spirit will reveal to us when we are not walking in the true love of God. But what I'm saying is it's individual in our lives. It's both sides, whether it's us or someone else. If we are not showing forth the love, what true charity and love is, according to the word of God, we're not showing forth real love. And now if we confess it, if we confess it, I'm saved. I'm born again, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. So then what that means is that we need to what crucify our flesh. We need to crucify our flesh. We need to meditate on the word of God and ask God to transform our mind according to his words. We need to ask God, Lord, sanctify me through the truth of your word. You said this is how I should be when I show love. I should be, be long-suffering. Even Christ was long-suffering towards us. He said he was long-suffering towards why we yet sinners. Christ died. He committed his love towards why we yet sinners. Christ died for us. But he says he's not slack concerning his promise of man counts slacks, but long suffering towards you and I, not willing that it should perish, but we all should come to repentance. That's love. So love cover up to the sin. So we should be, and when we see here in verse 7, when it's talking about burn all things, believe in all things, and hope of all things, and do of all things, my brothers and sisters, love, it just don't happen like God count of love, it just don't happen overnight. This is, it happens. We have the Holy Spirit, but we have to surrender. To the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit have his perfect work within us. So he's on the pure and heart to see God. And that means that our heart can only be pure through by the word of God. So we see here, when we're talking about I'm too busy, learning how to love and to hate. I'm serious. I'm talking about my own self. <laughs> because I realize a lot of time when we decree and declare the gospel, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a lot of time I realize that individuals are not rejecting the gospel. They are rejecting us as the messengers decreeing the clan the gospel because we're doing it outside of love. We're not doing it in love according to the word of God. And this is what God requires command of us. So my brothers and sisters, we are talking about when Apostle Paul said in verse uh, 12, 31, when he said, cover the earnestly, the excellent, the perfect gifts. And he know that the Holy Spirit we need, because the Holy Spirit is going to enable and empower us to work and, and to operate in the love according to the word of God. He said, we love him, we keep his commandments. We said, we disciples, we follow the Christ. He said, my love in your life is what's going to identify you with me. I know lots of time um, when we were talking about speaking in tongues early and, and how they were speaking of speaking in tongues in um, 1 Corinthians 12 and how 14 is talking about speaking in tongues as well. But we see how that we have to realize speaking in tongues may not edify the individual speaking and the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us utterance. But that's why I said even one of the um, gifts is prophecy that we was mentioned here and the prophecy is for the edification of the church. I mean, we can confuse individuals we speaking in tongues, especially with teachers speaking in tongues out of order and then no interpreter or don't even know whether they false tongues or tongues really unctioned by the Holy Spirit. So my brother and sister, we have a, um, a lot to do. And this is very important since we are doing this season. Individuals are talking about people out shopping and want to give gifts, want to express love. But my brother and sister, what's your motive? Is you just giving it because that's what you do? Is you giving it because out of love? Is you giving because that's just what they want? If you're giving just to shut people's mouth so they won't keep harassing you? My brother and sister, the greatest thing that we can should give anyone and show for is the love of Christ in our life that they be drawn to Jesus Christ so that's, so they know what real love is. We got all the, I tell you all these worldly songs and even some church and in and, and, and the churches today we're singing uh, that get us emotional all in our flesh and our mind, weeping and crying and shouting and dancing to something talking about love and they ain't even lifting up Jesus. <laughs> Look, and talk about the love that will cause us to have eternal life. My brother and sister, where God tells us for the way to sin death for the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ who shed his blood for you and I. So this is what Pastor Paul said and this is what you're saying about sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is preparing us to live a life as new creatures in Christ here on earth that's pleasing to him. Because how we live here on this earth determines which destination that we end up, whether it's in hell or in heaven. But my brother and sister, we should want to live a life of joy, peace, and happiness here to be whole soul, body, and spirit here on this earth. And I, I don't know about you, I got excited all by myself because I see here the greatest sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the greatest gift was love. And the, the greatest powerful gift was the power of the Holy Spirit that controls all the spiritual gifts. 
That's why I said that we can have these gifts and callings, but we can still live a simple and moral life. But why don't we do it out of love and obedience to God that souls will be received the gospel and acceptance of the Lord and say redeemers themselves? That they can be blessed. They can feel, they can uh, encounter um, a relationship with God here on earth and still await until judgment day. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Look, we don't want to wait the judgment day to make sure we're walking in love of God because my brothers and sisters, that's how I was saying about the iniquity. Don't God iniquity in our hearts. And guess what? Because it's sin. It's evil. It's wickedness. So, but my brother says Jesus Christ made it possible. He loved us so much when he shed his blood for us. He said, without the shed the blood, no remission of sin. Meaning he loved us just that much. And how much do we love each other to that make sure that um, we'll love the way God said out of the word. When we love the way God said love, my brother and sister, we'll draw individuals to Christ because of love even God, he said he drawn us through by his love. He drawn us through by his word. Whom he is. He said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And his word, even love, even what we're talking about today, is still the word of God. He just wants us to live whole, soul, body, and spirit. He just wants us to be um, complete the assignment that Jesus left here on the earth for us to do. Because the disciples and the forefathers and mothers and other individuals have gone on. They have fought their good fight of faith and they have finished their assignment. And now those are, you and I left, everybody left to see this day. Don't God did just leave us here to be on earth and say, now I'm saved, Holy Ghost, be baptized, speaking in tongues, the proof of evidence that I'm now born again. So are, what true? Yes, we can speak in other tongues and the Holy Spirit gives us others. Whether we speak or not, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to. But I tell you one thing, what really shows whether we truly been born again, even above the gifts. See, a lot of times I love to stir up the gifts like them. But love has to work along with these gifts. We got to have love. Because if we, you see how we were showing how he said, if we speak in tongues, we got to get the prophecy and the word of knowledge and even faith and don't have love, we are nothing. <laughs> but we can do all things as Christ has strengthened us. And this is why we see here through by the word of God, my brothers and sisters, how that I'm just so excited how God is an empowered you and I through by the word of God. We need to realize we got to love you one another. The word of God tells us about Oh no man nothing but love. That's the only thing we owe that's what we owe each other is love. We see as Romans 13 8 it says, Oh no man anything. I want to read that scripture to you. So you see I'm just not just saying it. Uh, there's a lot of scriptures I have down, but I'm not gonna go through all them today. But I just want to share just some to stir you up and, and keep myself stirred up. Then love how God say love, that I may be able to use my gift to bring glory to him, to draw souls into the kingdom of God. They can see that what real love is. You know, we got, I'm not able to master song about knowing what real love is. This is what real love is. And we try to find out. We tell people, I love you. You, love, you know, I used to write them when we was in school in Valentine's College, expressing love. And then they know what real love is. I'm just really learning out what real love is. The more I read the Word of God, I realize what I call love or even love. That was that lustful flesh of love. I'm that, that wound you and heal you and battle and abuse you. I'm talking about love that make your whole soul, body, and spirit. That you can still have the joy of the Lord each and every day. You can still be at peace. You can still be whole and in your right mind. <laughs> you can love and forgive and move on. And realizing that we all need this love of Christ. Because we see it Romans 13, 8. So, oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Hath fulfilled the commands of God's word. He said we love and keep his commandments. So we love you one another. He didn't say whether they will believe, only love believers, only love the saints, only love your mother, father, brother, sister, only love your family, your friends. Even he said love thy enemy. <laughs> Even those that's not so loving, those that's not so forgiving. He said love in spite of, that's what Jesus did. That is exactly what Jesus did. We see John 5, John 1 John 4, 20 says, If any man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And that's what he's saying. How can we say we love God? I love God, you love God. Yes, I love God. First of all, he said we'll keep his commandment. But then we say we love God, but if it's anybody that we know, anybody that we know that we don't love, we need to ask God for forgiveness and help us love those that we don't want to love. Because we haven't been so loving and kind and mercy and compassionate ourselves. 
That's why God said we don't forgive those sin trespass against us. He won't forgive us. So God said, love you, one another. It's a commandment of God, especially believer. He was a man just can't love. Yes, we can do it. And sometimes we see love as lust. And sometimes it's not that we don't really love. We say we love, but we don't really know what the meaning of love is. Because like I mentioned earlier, if we love how God say love, he said, love your enemy, love those that spitefully use you and persecute you for righteous sake, for my name's sake, for righteous. He said, love them. And you're like, but that's God will love it. <laughs> and he said, couple months or two, even though they may be simple, even though we may be simple. He did it for us when he committed his love while we yet tell us Christ died for us. So a lot of times when I start thinking things over my mind, my emotions, and my feelings, do you know what the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit turned the mirror on me and let me look at, well, what about you? <laughs> Let deny his home myself then. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, the convictor. The word Holy Spirit doesn't condemn us as believers. The word of God says, therefore, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But the Holy Spirit will convict us and reveal to us when we are out of order, we should be thankful that we have the Holy Spirit within us to make sure we still align in the God word, especially when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to love. Because we see here um, how I say, if I have charity, if we have charity, then we have the power to use um, the greatest gifts, love. And the greatest power, the Holy Spirit, which controls the gift of love. So we see here, when we was reading, here's a couple of um, gifts. Even in those scriptures that we read in 1 Corinthians 13, we saw the gift of speaking in tongues, we saw prophecy, we saw faith, we saw the word of knowledge. And also when it was talking about... Um, and in verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, they have not charity, I profit me nothing. We see that, you can see in verse 12, 8, which is talking about gifts of helps, gifts of government, administrative gifts, gifts of exhortation. You know, the, the not only the word of knowledge, but wisdom. So we see it's not just the five old in Ephesians 4, 11, it's got, so he gave some apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teachers. Well, to what? To perfect the saints to do the work of the ministry? For service. To be coming to the unity of the faith. So we see those five, those gifts in um, Ephesians 4, Latin, those are not only ministry gifts, but they're officers in the church. Meaning these gifts should be operating in the body of Christ. And meaning we should be, what? Teaching and training others how to use their gifts. And being equipped ourselves how to use our gifts. God said men are called, you're chosen, well, you call it equipped. So that means not only using our gifts to equip, but to still be equipped. Meaning we should be forever learning. Realize these gifts is just not uh, to myself. These gifts are given to individuals. Every born again believer. I love this. Every born again believer have a spiritual gift. And, and like I say, even Apostle Paul told Timothy, the, the, as a pastor, as a teacher, he told him, do the work of an evangelist. It may not be your gift, but do it. So that's one thing we all should be as born again believers in Christ. We should be able to um, evangelize even though it may not be our gift because we need to what, share our faith with someone else. And which love is above our faith. Love is above hope. And we saw that in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We said the, the greatest of faith is that faith, hope, and charity. And above all, them, the greatest is love. But we know our faith and the hope is still controlled by love. But empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't even believe in faith. The way that I saw all that we do outside of faith is sin. But when we really truly born again, we learn to believe everything that God said out of his word. And that's what I'm saying. We are, I don't know about you. I'm too busy learning how to love than to hate. Um, that keeps me busy because I tell you, I have to examine my own self. I say, okay, Lord, so now every time I think about something, something comes to my mind or I may get offended or or even my own actions may not be according to the word of God. No, I got a sense of envy. Now let me know. Alright, you're not walking in love. I had to talk to myself. That's what I'm saying. We didn't learn how to cast out the magic thoughts of our mind. Anything that comes in our mind and start operating our flesh is not pure, honest, just, of good report, and those things that are holy and righteous according to the word of God, especially as we talk about love. My brothers and sisters, I tell you one thing, if we really love how God said love, we'll see so many so more souls than other before saved. But we gotta do it out of love, even with these gifts. And so if we're operating these gifts and we are definitely not walking in the way God said love, then we need to what? We need to ask the Holy Spirit. We need to fast, pray, or crucify our own flesh. Sanctify ourselves that we can keep praying and reading scriptures of ourselves. We don't have to wait for somebody to lay hands on us. We can self heal and deliver ourselves through the obedience to the word of God. Even David, he learned how to encourage his own self. 
we need to learn how to encourage ourselves and and bring for deliverance and healing ourselves because we got the power, especially if we're born again of the Holy Spirit. And then we have the Word of God. We believe God's Word has the power to transform. Um, so we see it, my brothers and sisters. I just thank God for the Word because also how um, in John 15, 18 through 19, said, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So we see here what God said. He said the world hated him before it hated us. And since he chose us out of Jesus, and since he chose us out of the world, we're in the world, but not of the world, but he chose us out of the world. And what? Fill us with his precious Holy Spirit and, and enable us to power walk in his love. And because we walk in love, sometimes individuals hate the fact that you, you know, sometimes individuals see you like, well, what you so happy about? Like I said, we're just happy in Jesus and love the Lord and love individuals. And sometimes because of the, the culture and society time we're in now, when some people don't know how to have the real love because they're not used to people um, coming to them, saying they love them and coming with the right motive. So sometimes people act all nice, friendly, and smiling and happy and saying, you know, I love you. What can I do for you? And God will bless you. You be like, what you want? Because <laughs> sometimes we're so used to people having the wrong motive why they do or they expect something in return. But those of us in Christ, I just read the scripture earlier, Romans 13, 8, when he said, oh, no, man, that's so we should love you one another. We should love everybody. We may not agree with them, but we should still love everybody because God is in love and now we are born in the spirit of love. Because Matthew 5, 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's what I mentioned earlier. I'm going to read that again. This is what God love looks like. I know. The Holy Spirit is able and empower me to love like God loves. I can't do it in my flesh. Because flesh, don't, I tell you, flesh don't want to do it sometimes. But when I read the word of God, the Holy Spirit put me in check. <laughs> I said, okay, God. He said, that God himself shall suffer persecution. He said, they hated me. They're going to hate you. He's still going to suffer with me. She'll reign with me. And so this is a mark of true born again believers. So if you start finding opposition, people hating on you, not loving you, because you're serving God and you're trying to love them and they don't want to love you back. I know it's a, it's a drastic thing. It's a painful thing to love people and they don't show they love you back and show love in return. I know. And guess what? It's both sides. The word of God said, be not mocked when a man so thou shalt also be. Even at one point in time, we didn't even love Christ. But he loved us first. He loved us before we even fell in love with him. So now, because we love somebody and they don't love us back or the way we think they should, we still got to love them. <laughs> Look, I don't know about you. I think Christ is still loving me in spite of me. I tell you, that's what, this is what real love is. If anybody want to know, tell them First Corinthians the 13th chapter. And the Bible is what real love is. So if you're trying to um, check your um, thermometer or your love language levels, this is a good way to check it. <laughs> a good way to check it. Not only somebody's supposed to be loving you, but you be loving them. So it's both sides. So if you want to, pull out the role of love, First Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and read it together with the ones that you may not love or fell out love or think you love. And then you will know what's wrong with your love of life. See if it lies with the word of God. If it don't lie with the word of God, that's the problem of love life. It's not according to the word of God when he said real love is. So we see also, my brother, First Corinthians 1 10 says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, the name of Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is what Apostle Paul is telling the church to commit. So he said already, y'all need to be unified, and that's what it is even in the body of Christ today. Love is what holds us together. Because it's God. God is love. And since God really said for God so loved the world, God loved the world so much. He said the world consists of sinners and believers. Because we were all born in sin. <laughs> and sin, as I always say, since conceived in sin, after a natural birth of sin, after being born again of the Holy Spirit, have sinned. 
And, and I thank God for the word of God. Jesus Christ being an advocate, he said, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just forgives of our sins that cleanse us of all righteousness. And we say that we have no sin. God's word is not, we are a liar. And God's word, his truth is not in us. That's the word. That's 1 John 1, 9 and 10. So what I'm saying, take it up with God. It's his word, not mine. I got to live by the same word I preach and teach you. I know. I have to find myself repenting sometimes. Sometimes they're being real lying through by the Holy Spirit. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. God said He chastised. God said He chastised those that He loved. But it's amazing how uh, we want to chastise. Oh, glory be to God. We want to chastise other individuals when they don't love how we say love. But then we don't think God needs to chastise us when we don't love how He say love. <laughs> Look, God is not anyone to be played with. God, God, He loved. God, I mean, he's not even like our parents. I'd rather have a chastisement of my parents than God. God's chastisement is better for me. But what I'm saying is, they say they love you, and they be still spanking you and beating you at the same time. They say they love you. They may hold back things. They may not give you things. And that's, I'm glad I got to that point, because we, should, we need to stop looking at what we receive from other individuals is showing love. See, it's too often we're looking for material things. I'd rather for somebody to love me and don't give me nothing but love. Now that I know what real love is. Because <laughs> some of the things the individual has given us, we still don't even want it. And not even want it. It's not even something we need. And believe it's not what we need at the time. Right now, we're in a time. This love is a gift of love that we need all season, every year, every day long. Not just once a year when we just go out shopping and spending all these dollars, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'm not saying it's nothing wrong with giving gifts, but I'm just saying if we want to think of anything we need to give that's more value than anything in this world, we need to show forth love. Give love to one someone. There are so many people now that if they really knew what real love was or if they was truly loved genuinely by the ones that say they love them, they would not be afflicted and affirmed in their body. A lot of people, uh, like they call love sick. I would say sin sick. And the reason why I said sin sick is because when we don't obey the command of God to love, He said, Love the Lord thy God of our heart, mind, soul, and love thy neighbor thyself. That is sin. It's disobeying the command of God. And that causes sin. And He said, For the ways of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we'll sin sick, dying, and don't know why we're dying. I tell you one thing, I guarantee you, I wish y'all would just shout out and give a praise report when you start examining your love level, your love life, according to 1 Corinthians 13, the word of God, after you're born again. It comes from first being born again of the Spirit of God, believing the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then you start um, loving like God said love, and then let me know how your love life gets. Love God, and then and to help you a little further. You may say, well, Vengeance, I did that, and... and, and it caused us to be separated. Well, hey, I believe that Romans and my book is separated from the love of God. Making it, famous and pestilence and all these things. We should let nothing separate us from the love of God. Because if anybody really loves you, or if I really love you, or you really love somebody else, and we are born again believers in Christ, and we are loving the way God words say love, um, it means that we are unequally yoked. I'm not saying divorce and separate from people. I'm just saying you need to pray. We need to pray for them, or it could be us, pray for ourselves. That we will be drawn to God through by his word. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you heard my, the word of my father and, and you learn from it, then that's the only way you can go to the father. But Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, I'm the way, only way to the father. But they need to hear the word of God. And it could be too that it's not that they're not saved or it's not that we're not saved. It could be that we're still growing in spiritual maturity, but we need to realize we don't need to stay um, as I was doing the teaching of the day of the 21st century, we don't need to stay as babes in Christ forever. We don't need to remain calm. We got a spiritual mature, meaning our spiritual maturity comes through our obedience and our believing and faith and obeying the word of God. Because we see here when it dealt with uh, verse 8, 
when he said charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they should fail, whether they be tongues, um, they shall cease, or even knowledge shall vanish away. And this year we are talking about the spiritual gifts. He said, He said, Heaven and earth shall pass with my word shall forever stand. His word shall forever stand. But we see he even put his word and his love even above these gifts. Although they're written in the word. Because he said these gifts and calling without repentance. So we see here that charity is what? The one of the greatest gifts. But guess what? Love give us the power. Love give us the power, the love of God. Give us the power to love how we should love. And especially being enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because we see it, my brothers and sisters. I just thank God how I say how it says no promise is true until it come to pass, but also how he's even telling about the prophecy. How some the prophesied part. You know how sometimes God may let me say us and so they prophesize and they may not be it may not be complete or prophecy speaks. It speaks itself. And that's how sometimes God um, revealed things to us in the spirit and through his word. And um then he's like, but God revealed this to me. And then it's like, well, I know it's something else God's revealed to me. On that, is I just wait and trust God, and He revealed it in time. Sometimes we can't handle everything at one time. Let's think about if we knew. Oh, yes, the prophetic, they speak into the future, they speak what God's word says. But even then, too, sometimes we still don't have the fullness of it. But still realize that all of these gifts are still operating control by love and empower by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because even we see how he says, even when the perfect has come, and when we re realize that um, perfect means no more than maturing. And that's what he was saying about the gifts when he was talking about the gifts and um, Ephesians as well. If I'm going to read Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 11 and 16, when it was saying, um, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning crafts, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, there it is again. We got to speak the truth of God, word in love, and may grow up unto Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, and make an increase of the body unto the edifying of this self in love. So we not only speak. To each other truth and love but edify in one another love and it increase it's just like every man have a measure of faith and just like now when we saw in um first 13 verse 4 to 7 when it was telling us what the character of love looked like and the believers and what apostle paul has encouraged the church to do we may say you know what evangelist i can fulfill all of what the word of god said first corinthians um, 13 it says in reference to love some things I'm still working on some things we need to just allow the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives to run into the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will make sure we align the Word of God but the Word of God tells us living in freedom of Christ Jesus not to sin because we can sin and ask for forgiveness but this liberty is what to also obey the righteousness of God's Word so we need to see here we can see how now we can be I'm encouraging you as I've been encouraged myself through by the word of God, that whenever I find myself outside the will of God, outside of the commands of his word, just realign. That's all that I do. Now we, when I kind of get out of line and start bawling our ties inside out and, and everything and, and run across the world, road, can't be straight in the road. And oh boy, that's what we're talking about, straight in our way. That's what I'm saying. The word of God will cause us to be aligned up. And so that's what we need to see when it comes to the Word of God. That our alignment as believers in Christ is the Word of God. And this is how we see the importance. And this is why Apostle Paul, you will wonder why he will go from 1 Timothy 12 talking about spiritual gifts. Then he take a break and start coming in uh, 1 Timothy 13 talking about love. And then he started going back again in 1 Corinthians 14 talking about um, speaking in tongues about gifts again. 
is because he realized that they need to realize that these gifts need to be operated in love. You still need to be remain unified. These gifts are not unto yourself. And you need to speak truth and love to one another. And when we're speaking these gifts, speaking gifts, manifesting gifts, ministry gifts. So we see is that um, when we decree and declare, we're speaking God's word. So God wants to speak his word in truth and in love because he says sanctify us through by his truth, his word. It's God that consecrates and set aside for his purpose and use here on earth through by our surrender and obedience to the word of God. And he said we love and keep his commandment. So I'm like, Lord Jesus, we said we love God. God said, you really, really love me? Are you obeying my commandments? That's what I'm telling you. I'm still busy learning how to love not to hate. Because I tell you, I, got, I mean, I don't have time for nothing else. I mean, when you talk about love, I said, Lord, I'm going to be honest. I'll tell you about myself. I still got work for the Holy Spirit doing me with this love here. <laughs> but guess what? I'm so grateful he allowed me another day, another day to at least get it in order. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying, God allow you and I another day. Another day to obey his commands. Another day to walk right before him. Another day to really show love. Love is so powerful that the cover multitude of sin. Love that love the enemy. A love that caused individuals to run into Christ. So we said we gotta speak this, use these gifts out of love. I know we get angry and upset and if we want to hate anything, we don't need to hate the individual. We need to hate the sin in our lives and the lives of others to the point that we're gonna love each other to life and we're gonna love live the life, we're gonna crucify our flesh. That we may encourage them how God has delivered us. And we know a lot of us have been delivered from sin, demon possession, strongholds. And, um, and Jesus Christ said he came to set the captive free. And that's what he sent us to do. You got people that are captive, people that are wounded and broken hearted. Because we're not walking in the right kind of love. Lord have mercy. I, <laughs> look, you want healing for your heart? Love like God said love. I tell you, it's working for me. Lord have mercy. I wish I know this years ago. But I thank God I'm here now to get my heart healed. <laughs> Lord, let the Holy Spirit's work circumcise our heart. The word of God tells us out of bones our heart, our mouth speak. So if we are speaking um, contrary to the love language of God's word, we'll bring up our wounds and we can't be healed. So if we want to be healed in the inner man of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will heal us. He says the consuming fire. And, when, and then when we don't know how to pray, if he said, Lord, I know I'm not loving like I should love. How can I love you how you said love? And that's what, like I said, when we don't know what to pray and we don't know what to say, sometimes you get so broken hearted, you're wounded, you're moaning, you're moaning and crying, you don't know what you're saying, you're just crying. But guess what? When we feel the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost says, okay, I got your back. Then the Holy Spirit starts interceding for us to edify our inner man that's body and flesh and our hearts and our mind cause it to be healed, soul, by the Spirit and align the Word of God. And then, and then we can break out with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And people are like, what happened to you? You said I had an encounter with the Holy Ghost and I prayed in the Spirit. And this was the results. The Holy Spirit love lifted me, the love of God. <laughs> Let's be lifted by the love of God that we can help somebody else's joy. That that, and then the word of God said that our joy may, may remain. I tell you, like I said, this joy God's given to me and you. The world ain't given and the world can't take it away. But the world can't take it away unless we give them the power and authority to take it away. So if your love life and your heart has been broken and taken and the love is not what it should be according to the word of God. And you feel, and I feel the Holy Spirit, we have the main authority to control this flesh, control our own love life, not the Holy Spirit. I told you, that's what I'm saying, there's nothing wrong. If you're talking about people, when you, you got to speak in tongues, yes, we feel the Holy Spirit, God. we have the ability to utter if we want. And if you're like, well, Lord, I can't speak, well, ask the Holy Spirit, he said he will give you utterance. Because I tell you, praying in the Spirit, it really does good for me and edify me, because sometimes I don't know to pray for what to say. And it has nothing to do with broken heartedness. It's had to do with I don't know what to pray in what any situation. So that's what we need to do. I'm just excited about this the word of God that like, I'm too busy <laughs> learning how to love than to hate. I tell you. Because I'm I'm pressing my way and you need to press your way. And this is something we need to press in, not just during this season, each and every day. Checking our love levels. And especially when it usually gets me said we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And we'll see just how much um, love make a difference, even in our witness. We don't have to keep trying to make people do. We don't have to make people love us. 
when we love like God said love, they will be drawn to us because of the love of God. And that's one thing I had a minister say one time. Um, he said, doesn't mean that because people always want you, I'm not belittling people now, um, to use your gifts. It's not so much because of you, it's the gifts. And so since the gifts, and this is what Apostle Paul trying to church, encourage the church of Corinth, don't get caught so much on the gift, but the gift giver. That's giving you these gifts, that has uh, giving you these gifts and giving you the ability to use these gifts. It's not of ourselves and within ourselves. He says because of the gifts. And that's the same thing with the, this great gift of love. Because we love individually drawn to us because of the love of Christ. And when they're drawn to us because of the love of Christ, they give us opportunity if they're already believers to encourage them. Or to just be in agreement and prayer with them. Or just a time to edify, like it's saying about edifying and increasing in love. Um, also, it gives a chance to witness the gospel to them. Introduce them to Jesus Christ, the one who is the founder of love. Um, that they may show forth the love of Christ. Um, a lot of time, if you really, what's going on in society today is because individuals do not know or have encountered God or don't know what real love is. Or because they are uh, lost focus. And I'm saying that about lost focus because we see here that Apostle Paul just reminding them, y'all have these gifts, but you need this division amongst you. So it could be because say, how can a divided house stand? If we are divided, we cannot stand, we cannot be walking in, we cannot be empowered. So we see it, my brothers and sisters, I'm just so grateful about the word of God. And then, um, what was I saying um, about this also, how he was dealing with... Um, and then I was talking about perfection, about growing spiritual maturity. Because Christ said when he come, we will be just like him. So what we, what we need to do, we need to unify ourselves here on earth. Um, we need to just continue to be perfecting and edifying and encouraging and use these gifts uh, out of love, um, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then God said he'll do the rest. That's all he wants to do. Um, he just wanted to create the class where in and out of season. He told him, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. He said, only thing he wants to do, do create and declare the word of God and live the life. Live the life of Christ here on the earth daily. Uh, where will we go? Uh, where will we go? Um, we'll be an examples of him. And that means that Jesus is no longer here in the flesh, but the Holy Spirit is here in the earth within us, leading and guiding us according to how Jesus would have carried out ministry here on earth. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit back to lead and guide us all truth, bring everything to our remembrance, pray for us. We can be confident in one thing, my brother and sister, that he has begun a good work on you. Now he's going to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. So we don't have to fear um, using these gifts. We just you need to embrace and rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and stop trying to do so much within our thing here to charm. Trying to make things happen and do it within myself. I don't have the power. You don't have the power. But... The only, we have the power when we're born again of the Holy Spirit. So let's let the Holy Spirit do what he does. And let us just be the vehicle that the Holy Spirit is going to use. But we still have to put our time in and prepare ourselves through by the study of God's word. And most of all, walking in obedience to God's word. Because we see here in verse 11, I'll tell you the truth. I know it's time to hear this scripture quoted. And you know, sometimes we do act like children. It's wrong people. Nobody said the children were even leaders. Lord have mercy. We see here. How he said um, in verse 11, he said, When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. That means grow up. We need to grow up. <laughs> I need to grow up. I'm not a grown woman, but I need to grow up more in, in the word of God, in my faith and obedience to God's word, and especially to come to love. So I just throw my own self out there. He's still working on me. I'm going to keep working at it because I'm going to make it in, no matter what. When he said love, and if I don't want to love, I'm going to pray, repent, go to the word of God, keep crucifying his flesh, and, 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 and just keep doing it over and over again. Because I realize that if I don't use these gifts out of love, it's sin. And God will chastise me because when he said, the harmless principle of the labors of few, pray to the Lord of the harmless, he raised up labors in his vineyard. He said, the souls don't belong to, they belong to God. But he wants the soul to prosper. He said, beloved of all things, we're to be prospered and help as our soul prosper. So that means when we speak God's word and truth and use these gifts and we're showing forth the love of God, then he's the one that does the drawing. We just do the decree and claim. We just speak. Do it. We just got to do it like Jesus. Speak what our fathers say speak. And we say, how do I know the voice of God? Know the word of God. And how is the individuals or how we were drawn to God? 
through by the word of God. That's why he said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We just need to decree and declare the word. He says power, cooking power, and sharp and into his word. This is the divine son of soul, spirit, joy, and mind, desire, thoughts, and text, hearts, and mind of mankind. Only thing we need to do is, like I said, speak it in the atmosphere. <laughs> we see Jesus did that even when he hid an open son. He didn't have to go to anoint him and lay hands on him. It's too often we got to be there to touch the mind and lay hands on them to see what happens. Sometimes we want to see the manifestation. We can see the manifestation. Decree and declare in Jesus' name and it be so. And then we hear the praise report. And that's why the noble son, they came and told him the son living one hour. The same hour Jesus said it. See, sometimes individuals like, I just got to be there and got to lay hand. I'm not, I like Jesus, I Jesus work ministry. I mean, I can't get anywhere, you can't get anywhere. But when we're walking up right before God, we decree and declare his word and use these gifts out of love. We can pray and fast and speak it, and it happened. And I don't mean to use these gifts as um, a, a way of witchcraft and sorcery. Because um, God and Jesus didn't make nobody do nothing. He gave everybody a free will. So what I'm saying is we pray that individuals, whatever they may be going through, their relationships or whatever, even their love life, that they be drawn to God and that they will have that encounter God for themselves. Not We don't need to try to make somebody do nothing. It's sinful and it's wrong. If every, God's given everybody the free will, to accept and really create and declare the gospel is the word of God. We can't make people be saved. We can't make people stay saved. We can't make people believe they feel the Holy Spirit. We can't make people speak in tongues. We can't make people use the gifts. Even if they use, if we're using, any of us are using our gifts, not controlled or operated by the Holy Spirit, we can't even make them stop using it. But we can say, if we're not, if we're using these gifts and it's not out of love and not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God, then we stand before God and we check out Him because at the problem you work with nicotine, I knew you're not. And then we start stop doing roll call of, you know, who we lay hands on and, and like he in the word of God. And it's telling us right here. It ain't got nothing to do with being a good man or a good woman. They tell about Jesus is a good man. Jesus wasn't just a good man. Jesus was a holy and righteous man. He obeyed the will of the Father. And that's what we must do. A lot of times we say, well, I'm good. I don't hate nobody. I love everybody. But a lot of times, I thank God I said that. Because a lot of times we say, I don't hate nobody. I love everybody. I say I love everybody, nobody I hate either. But when I start reading this word of God, and it said, do not behave itself unseemly. When I got, act unseemly, I ain't walking in love. Then when I get easily provoked, I ain't walking in love. Then when I want to think something, thinking no evil, when I think something evil, I'm not walking in love. So what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I'm telling you now, I thank God for the word. That's why the word of God to transform us. That's why we need to ask God to cast out imagine thoughts of our mind that's contrary to the word of God's word. And that uh, when we do that, it uh, calls our mind, we need to speak this word of ourselves. We can learn themselves. We can learn how to pray and encourage ourselves through by the word of God. Because we see here, basically what he's saying is that now, I was, and you know sometimes individuals tell us, you a grown man, a grown woman, you still acting like a child. This is what the word is saying. We need to grow in perfect maturity in Christ according to the word of God. But we cannot do it outside being born again. So let's stop judging individuals. When we see someone, or even ourselves, I would say, if we're still acting like children, speaking like a child, thinking like a child, understanding like a child, and we are grown adults. And the children are more the children are acting more mature than we are. Something wrong with that picture. We should be an example for them. But God even said his word that we should come as little children, even the children will lead us. So sometimes, that's why, children, thank you God, that's why some children today act like they're the adults. They run that call the shots and, and they take control like they're the parent. Something is wrong with that. When God said train up a child, he didn't say the, the child trained the parent. The parent trained the child. But then he said the children would lead us too because he knew some of the children would be more submissive, obedient to him than us grown folk. Lord, glory be to God. <laughs> I tell you, so when it's like that, and the children are have a relationship with God, and we don't, and we acting like them. Now I'm not saying they should be taking earthly authority over us, but what I'm saying when they'll say they're born again and feel the spirit of God, and they are walking according to the precepts and command of God and love. Yes, we need to follow them then, and not ourselves, till we get born again or converted, or we start crucifying our flesh and walking like God's word. I tell you, 
I just love God. <laughs> and I love God's word. Because the test is by here. I might have said, we need to look in the middle. I don't know about you. I see myself. When I saw verse 12, when it's my for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. You know, you know, we can know who Jesus is through his word of God. And we don't really know ourselves. The only way we can really know ourselves is the Holy Spirit of God to reveal us to us. And God revealed us to us through by His Word and through by the Holy Spirit. Because the Word of God tells us our hearts to deceive of all things and desperate wicked. So since we were talking about earlier about rejoicing not in iniquity but rejoicing in the truth. And this is what you see I'm rejoicing in the truth of God's Word. In spite of even in times of life that I'm not aligned with God's word, but I'm agreement with the truth of God's words, because I know the more I continue to read God's word and obey God's word, then I'm going to be sanctified and set apart, and I'll be empowered to live out the truth of God's word. I can't do it within my flesh. I can't do it within myself. And then that's how we know that we are truly born again, sons and daughters of God, because we are led by the Spirit of God, and no longer, yes, the word of God tells us, wherefore, therefore, there's no temptation coming to man, which he has not already given us a way to escape. Yes, we're going to be tempted to sin because we're in flesh, but we don't have to surrender to the sin. And especially since we're talking about love. We got to love. God said, if you don't forgive those sin trespasses, or he will not forgive us. We got to walk in love, but we don't allow love to cause us to sin because we love. You know, we say we love a lot of things. Well, I'm talking about today, loving like God. Not that I love ice cream, I love cake, and I love chicken, and and I love this mood, I love that vicar, I love that house, I love that dress, I love that jewelry, I love this man, woman, boy, girl. I love how you talk, walk, and how you shape, and all this guy. We get caught all these fleshly things. But my brother and sister, these fleshly bodies, you can identify. The older we get, some things just change. But God has no respect to person when it comes to love. He is saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. And when we love like God said love, because he changed not, we should change not in our love, lover, and language towards one another according to the word of God, even though we change. <laughs> Glory be to God. I love God. Can't nobody do it. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. Can't nobody do us like the word of God. When we walk in obedience, because God's word will cause us to have the mind of Christ. We want the mind of Christ when it comes to love. We got to do it God's way, not our way. And I tell you, when he said now, verse 13, now about the faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. He said love is the greatest. The greatest of faith and hope. Yes, we need faith. We need to trust in God. And also, we need to hope that great expectation of what God is able to do. And we need to be able to give individuals what great expectation of hope we have in Christ Jesus. But we still got to walk in faith out of love. We got to have the hope and that's great expectation out of love of Christ. And this is nowhere around it, my brothers and sisters. Nowhere around it. And that's why we see here. I am too busy learning how to love than to hate. Um, we have got to do it because we see here. When I told you about, when in conclusion, I'm just going to repeat some of these verses them again. Uh, at least some of the reference, um, paraphrasing what I was mentioning earlier. Because I've already read the scriptures about um, I am too busy learning how to love than to hate. Because we see here, we got to love you one another's God said love. Not only that, we owe no man nothing. We owe no every man what love. No matter what. No matter how we feel or how we think about them. Love. Love those. Because you know how it told us also how we got to love family, friends, and foes. We got to love everybody. The known and the unknown. And especially if we may flow in these spiritual gifts, how God have us meaning we should have no anger, hatred, bitterness, jealousy, envy, strife, um, uh, having the works of flesh and operation in our lives, or even and even individuals we know may be living a life that we don't agree with, or they may be struggling with certain trials, tribulations, sins, and temptations, or they may have different preferential lifestyles than we that we know, even our own lives is contrary to the word of God. That um, we're not to be the judge. God said, Judge you not, you be not judged. The word of God is the judge himself. He would do the separating. Only thing he told us to use the gifts. He told us to use the gifts, but they are operating, controlled by love and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we see, like he mentioned, how can we say we love God if we don't love our brothers or sisters or even people of different race, ethnic, or different faiths? We got to still love them. Because if we don't, God said, if we're lying, then the truth is not us. How can we love don't love them and we say we love God. We ain't never seen God, but I, love, I know I love God. I love God based upon my 
newfound birth relationship in Christ Jesus and through the Spirit of God and knowing the Word of God said in reference to No, I've never seen him at no time. But because I fell in love, oh Lord, I don't fell in love with him just because of the word. <laughs> it, you, oh God, it's powerful. Isn't that something? And some people think me crazy. I don't fell in love with somebody. The only thing I did was read their letters. And they're gonna be what? Oh God, I'm gonna use that one. I, I love to, I love to, I love to um, bring things and get people mind wondering. And I'm like, that's a good one. I'm gonna have to use when I'm not talking. I'm saying, you know what? I don't fell in love with somebody. The only thing I read was their letters. I never seen them a day in my life. And they're like, what? Girl, you act like those people that met somebody in one day and say, love at first sight. Yeah, love at first sight. Glory be to God. Love at first sight after I got born again could understand what a real love letter writing was like. And they don't want to, they're not going to talk about you. That's a good point for y'all. So I'm telling you, you can, you, you can learn how to the Holy Spirit love a lot. I'm like, I don't fell in love with somebody I've never seen before. I gotta, I gotta work, I gotta work that one. I tell you, because this is a way that you can bring people in the conversation to talk about Jesus. And then after I tell them, they they want to know. I don't got them hyped now. They want to know about who this person. I've been reading the letters and fell in love with, never seen them. And I said, give me everything. I've done everything I want and need. There's nothing that I need that they haven't provided, and things that I want and haven't received it. I know they're gonna give it to me when they know it's time. They be like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all. Uh, I, I feel myself going another direction. I'm gonna roll off here. But what I just want to share is this: that we need to realize that um, God did it, and we can do it. He gave His love. He said, "For God's so love, the world." He gave all the love that was rolled up in Him that He even transferred into us with the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God said, I give to the call without repentance. But then we repent of our sins. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Then we feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Then those spiritual gifts that God has already given us is already manifested in us. That wasn't in operation because we have repented of our sin. And now that we repent of our sin, now these gifts can manifest because the Holy Spirit is within us, is there to empower them to manifest. And now, in order for the even when they manifest, then we have to surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to operate these spiritual gifts through us. But then they're still an equipping process. We need to take time to be equipped. That's how the same way we feed our natural bodies physical food, we need to feed the Holy Spirit of God, the spiritual food of the Word of God. So my brothers, I probably said something encouraging that I can go on and on about this love. I don't know about you, I just got so hyped and excited myself just about I am too busy learning how to love than to hate. And I said, Lord, that blessed my soul. I tell you, it did me good. So I pray that it has encouraged you and encourage someone else. Encourage someone else to um, read First and 13 chapter and they're not believers. Uh, you can evangelize them. You can share your faith and with them. You can pray with them. Study along with them. Um, you may not preach or teach it like I did, but do it however the Holy Spirit um, leads you to do it. Um, give, share your faith. And share how God, your relation in Christ and the love he's bestowed upon you has made a difference in your life. So we're going to have our communion on today. I pray um, that you have your communions and not you can um, take it when you do have it. But we're going to commune today and I'm going to read our communion um, scripture first in Corinthians 11 chapter verses 23 through 27. But I pray today, today, today. Every second, not just every day, because sometimes we don't know who's going to make it to the next second. Um, life is just like a vapor, my brothers and sisters. We shouldn't take life for granted. What God tells us to teach us to number our days and to apply our heart unto wisdom. So in order to apply our hearts unto wisdom, we still need to be born again. Because if we want to go in the statue and wisdom of God's word. We want faith in God. We want faith in mankind. We have to walk in obedience to God's word. And and that's too, um, like you're saying, speaking truth. The word of truth and love um, is love. It's the love of God that draws men into repentance. Um, it's the love of God that sustains us. It's the love of God that keeps us walking in our newfound faith in Christ. And he said, he's the author. He defend, he's the author and the finish of our faith. But still, it's still uh, tied in with his love that he has bestowed upon, upon you and I. And that's why I mean God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whom so believe should not perish. For he sent him into the world not to condemn the world, but the world through him may be saved. He was sent into the world to seek and to save those that were lost, meaning in sin. 
But then we know that each and every one of us, as I say, was conceived in sin, born in sin, even after our new birth. But for those that never accepted Christ, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I just want you to know that uh, we all were sinners. And even today, we do not have to continue this walk of sin, and God forbid, but we do find ourselves walking in sin for whatever reason, through trials, tribulation, temptations, uh, persecution in life, or whatever it may be, or just never even have heard the gospel. The word of God tells us for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God and for, for the wage of sin and death, for the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So in order to um, be a part of uh, more to what? Love and not hate. Um, we got to be born again of the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit empower us to love how God said love. The word of God said we confess thy mouth. On the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus dead, thou shalt be saved. For a man believes his heart unto righteous confession is made into salvation. We just need to acknowledge that we're sinners and we need to believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When Apostle Paul, he decreed and declared, he said that he had, how, in seven, when he had been in Count Damascus Road, even how he says written in the scripture that he died, he buried, and he resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures for your sin and my sin. Jesus Christ himself, because of the love. That means that when he died, he said, without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. And that means that he showed forth his love towards you and I. Even before we were conceived in our mother's womb. This is like Jesus Christ um, coming from heaven, being with the Father in the beginning. Even although he's now exalted in heaven on the right hand of the Father. He commended his love towards my yet sinners. He went Christ himself, he died for you and I. And even through his death, he made it possible that we repent of our sins. He said we confess our sins, he's faithful. And just forgive us of our sins, that cleanse us all unrighteous, that thou can be saved. He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not only saved the same to salvation from sin, but whatever it is that may try to uh, entangle us, that or may keep us in bondage or bound us, that we can be delivered from it. But it comes to um, us realizing that we need to spend more time. We need to spend more time being busy learning how to love than to hate. Because we need to realize, according to the word of God, he said they hated him before, um, Jesus said they hated him before they hated us. And they hate us as born again believers. And I'm sharing with you now. Because if you accept Christ, and individuals start hating you, don't look at them hating you. Just do like Jesus said, forgive them for the new life what they're doing. Because guess what? We too, before we got saved and delivered, and, and even in our spiritual growth now, we were once just like some of those. Sometimes we've acted out. I see myself all the time, myself now and my delivered self um, before, um, through by the word of God. I just thank God for deliverance and errors, and I thank God for still delivering other errors. And the key is at least knowing that in order to even start the process of being delivered, um, being saved, being healed, being made whole soul by the Spirit, it comes from believing in the gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then feel the Holy Spirit of God. And study and obey the word of God. The obedience to God's word is what empowers us. And definitely when it comes to love. Because we need to realize that God loves us. Some of us don't even love God. They don't love the neighbors. Don't even love the self. But when we start loving God. And love how God say the word. Say love in 1 Samuel 13. Chapter 8 my brothers. We'll see ourselves from whatever state we find ourselves in life now. That we thought we could never overcome. We can do all things in Christ to strengthen us. But in order for Christ to strengthen us, Jesus Christ himself is saying, so I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. There's no way to the Father except through by me, the Son. We must believe in the gospel, believe in Jesus Christ, and believe in the Father that now that when we become born again believers in Christ, that we are sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. Meaning that we are born again. That's what he said about we'll be in this world, but not other world. We're going to be tempted while we're here. I'm not going to tell you that you won't be tempted. But the word of God said, wherefore, therefore, there's no temptation coming to man which he has already given us a way to stake. So it means even during the times of our temptation, there's no temptation that we have gone through that nobody else in the world hasn't gone through. And even Jesus Christ himself, even though he was tempted by Satan, um, he told him, Thou shalt not tip the Lord thy God. And he said, Written man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So after I've been born again, been filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and after we continue to start studying, meditating, and walking obedience to God's word, we'll find ourselves, although beginning as babes in Christ, We'll find ourselves, the more we submit to God, he says, submit to God and resist the devil and he'll flee. The enemy of our flesh, the enemy of our mind, the enemy of other individuals, even in our atmosphere, is going to come against us. 
But guess what? We need to realize God has not given us the spirit of fear, power, love, and sound mind because He promised that He never leave nor forsake us. He lead us to the end of time, and that's why He does that when He seals the power of the Holy Spirit upon our belief and acceptance in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We just need to believe. And that's my prayer today. My prayer today that um, if there's anyone that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, redeeming their life, um, that you will realize it's just a coming to the place and know that you're sinners, believing that God's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that He's empowered and filled you with the power of the Holy Spirit, and continue to study the Word of God and walk in obedience to God's Word. Now, especially with love. And not only that, especially, and use, I got it, your spiritual gift, and using your spiritual gift. And so, not only that, but even um, sharing your faith. You, there may be some of you that are already saved, already falls of Christ, and um, you may not um, have the gift of advantage. You may not have been sharing your faith with others or someone that may listen to this, and you may be putting your sin and believing in the gospel and, and confess and become a believer in Christ. Share it with someone and let them know that you did it in faith, uh, whether it's on social media or whether you're by yourself, um, or if someone else witnessed to you. Um, you know, you're saved. You got to believe that when you do believe in the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're saved. Salvation has nothing to do with feeling. Salvation has to do with faith. For he said that, for by grace I'll be saved through faith, not a works that any man should boast. It's a gift from God. So faith and grace is a gift from God. So we believe in faith. It has nothing to do with feeling and emotion. Yes, the individuals, they uh, respond differently when they repent of their sin and become believers. Some are more um, worshipers and active than others. And it doesn't mean because you may not interact and act like someone else. Is the key is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Meaning that you believe it. In fact, you believe God and His Word. So um, not only that, my brothers and sisters, just believe. And my prayers too, it may be someone that's in the back of the state. Just repent of your sin. And those in the back of the state, you know what it means to have an account and a relationship with God. You know what thing you need to do is confess your sins. And he's faithful just to give your sin and to cleanse your law and right. You believe God to clean your clean heart and renew a right spirit within you that you be renewed. He said, all that I will make parish, that any man be renewed day by day. And that's what happens when we sin. When we sin and we confess our sin, that's when the refreshing comes. That's why I say greatest he is in us and he's in the world, the Holy Spirit that enables us. So some individuals just need a refreshment of the Holy Spirit, but most of all need to confess the sin or sins that has been committed to God with our whole heart that we may be restored. Then it may be those that may be given to the reprobate mind. And that's what happens when we don't want to retain God um, and knowledge in us in a walk of obedience God. We, we ourselves cause ourselves to be given to the reprobate mind. Those of us that are even as believers or Unbelievers, if we continue to walk in sin because we're not born again and we're not obeying God's word, and we want to, I just can't, it's like I got this addiction, I just can't stop this sin and this, this stronghold in my life. But it's because we haven't surrendered to the power, especially as believers, because we have the Holy Spirit of God within us. It's because we are, we are quenching the Holy Spirit or we're grieving the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is there to lead and guide us to all truth and we bring all things back to our memories. And what it is, we have, we are having a deep ear. To the, not listen to the Holy Spirit, but the whole we are the Holy Spirit of God is the Word of God in us, and we are still strong with strongholds and addictions and, and things in our life that's holding us bond, bond and bondage that we start, we can't overcome. And we'll feel the Holy Spirit is one of two things: we are ignoring the function of the Holy Spirit, or we are not walking our spiritual maturity, or we just want to be saved and, and enjoy living on the life of sin and disobedience. But my brother and sister, let's not dumb without salvation. Let's make up our mind that we're going to walk in the beast of God's word and repent. That we may be empowered um, even to do like Jesus. You, individuals may not believe that you and I are saved because of our attitude, our character, what we say, what we do. When we say we're saved, they're still, still doing things that we did when we, before we accepted Christ. And they like, I'm a good Lord. I don't think they say. So what I'm saying, at least we need to walk rightly before individuals and obey God's word. So at least they'll believe it's for the work's sake. And what we do, like Jesus told those that they believe in him, at least you may not believe in me. You may not believe I'm born again of the Spirit of God, but at least believe what I say and what I do according to the Word of God that you hear me say. And so, and that's the key, but we still need to make sure that our lives is lined up with what we say. Then it may be those that blaspheme against God or may have blasphemed against someone else, praying that perhaps if they too repent, um, seriously repent that God may have mercy upon them that may allow them an opportunity to, to enter in to the kingdom of God. 
and not only just to enter into the kingdom of God and those of us as believers, that when the word of God says, serve the creator and the dead are you, that we believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be of service in the earth. Learn how to use our gifts. Learn how to use our gift to help build the kingdom of God here on earth. Teach other individuals how to use that gift and be service. Jesus said he didn't come to he, can, he didn't come to be served but to serve. And that's what we should realize. The greatest too is to be a servant. It's too often we want to be servants. We want to be servant, we don't be servant. And too often we want to walk we want these gifts. And we want to cover the best gifts. And sometimes we cover gifts. It's not the gifts God ordained for us to live without effective. But we want a gift because somebody else got that gift. My brother and sister, all the gifts are given by the self same Holy Spirit. So we need to realize that, but they still should, as we mentioned today, need to be controlled by love. That we may build the body of Christ. Like I said, we need a strong foundation. And that strong foundation be based upon the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the foundation of love and power by the power of the Holy Spirit. So my brother and sister, we're going to pray, then we're going to take communion. But I pray that you will share... Uh, what you got on the word of God on today, and that we too, even now, examine ourselves according to the word of God. He said, This is why some are weak and sick, sick among us, and some are weak. Because what? Because we partake of communion and sin without repentance. Always the Holy Father, heaven, we come to you, humble as we know how now, God. Asking you now, God, before we partake of your communion today, in reference to the bread that represents your body and the wine or juice that represents your shed of blood for our sins. You said often we do this in remembrance of you, that it bring glory unto you, God. But most of all, God, you forgive us of any sin that we committed in word, deed, or thought. God, that we can walk in our divine healing, that we can be whole soul, body, and spirit as we commemorate and commemorate, God, your shed of blood for the remission of our sins, but also in your submission to the Father, committing your love to us while we are yet sinners. You died for us because the love that you showed for us and that we show forth the love towards you, God, by walking in obedience to your word. So we give you glory and praise even now for turning this bread from a natural to a supernatural use and also the wine or the grape juice from a natural to a spiritual use and representation of your blood. And we thank you even now, God, for forgiveness of the sins that we committed. We thank you even now, God, for making us whole soul, body, and spirit. And we thank you now, God, that we will go forth and walk in the love according to the word of God. And we show forth your light of Christ that abides within us when you command that you put forth and let our light so shine upon men they should see our good works and should glorify your Father which are in heaven and we give you th thanks and glory and praise even now God for the people of God the word of God the anointing of God and the communion of God in Jesus Christ's name Amen 1 Corinthians 11 chapter verses 23 to 27 it says for I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus Christ the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. But as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. So my brothers and those of you that have your bread, let's break and eat all of it in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. Now for our wine, our grape juice, and representation of the shedded blood for our sins. Let's partake of all of it in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, my brothers. Thank you for joining me. Lord willing, I'll be back on next Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Bible study and the completion of St. John, the 7th chapter, verses 25 through 52 or 53, I believe. So, Lord willing, I'll see you then. If not before then, I pray you continue to go forth and be blessed, O Lord. May the grace, mercy, peace, and love of God be with you all. In Jesus Christ's name, and I love you all to life. Amen.